From its first trailer to its release, one of Zelda 64's most prominent features has been its ever-changing design. Going through four stages plus a concept stage, the world evolved drastically into the masterpiece that we arrived at today. However, as a result, a lot was altered or even cut, especially the large cast of the game's characters. So today on Cut Content, we explored the beta character designs of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell too to further support us and keep creating new videos. Back in December of 1995, the first trailer of Zelda 64 was shown to the world and presented our first look at Link to give us an idea of what Zelda would look like in 3D. As such, what better place to start with than with Link's evolving design? Back in this stage, which I like to call the concept stage, Link heavily resembled his design from Zelda 1, with having a yellow accent on his hood, brown sleeves, brown hair, and a short stature. Only unique thing is him having a simple metal shield with no design and brown tights, a likely placeholder till they started to make more unique designs. Thus, in following this into the early stages of development, Link started to appear more unique. The yellow accent was gone, he had blonde hair, a much larger and unique shield, and was a good deal taller. Not too different from the general look he has, but a lot closer to his Link to the Past design. In fact, we even got a neat piece of concept art that was made for this stage, showing he finally was becoming rather unique than simply a modified Zelda 1 design. Not too long after in development, his design was further evolved. Now sporting gauntlets, brown tights, and his shield now even had swirls added to them, bearing the four pieces of the Triforce, looking a lot closer to its final design in fact. Then when development took a whole other turn in redoing the game's graphics and design is when he started to resemble closer to how he looked in the final game by having more defined gauntlets, boots, and now even wearing his white tights too. In fact, his whole stature, aside from his shield, were more or less the same as the final games here. Now, before heading into the final stage of development, I present this image from Hyrule Historia that was made in September of 1997, which was the bridge point between that last stage of development I just spoke of and the next one. Now, as I mentioned, the only thing keeping this Link from looking like his final incarnation is his shield. And it seems at this bridge point, his shield also had one other redesign that we do not see in any of the release screenshots. It's clear they want to completely do away with this rather old shield as this redesign now featured a gold trim and an upside down Lorulean Triforce. And while on the topic of this image, we even get a good look at Link's Master Sword at this stage, which looked very different with a simpler design of having two sharp ends on its hilt and a red jewel as opposed to a gold one. And also considering we have Link's vehicle, or er, horse here, Epona, Epona looked different here, sporting black hair instead of her signature white hair she normally has. Of course, this could also be a generic horse drawn up for this prior to even making Epona. Now, once we go past this image into the final stage of development, Link's shield is finally of the same design as the final games. Basically, Adult Link is finalized, so then this takes us to Young Link, which the first iteration of him is seen in this concept poster, but his first screenshot not shown until a month later. And considering it was this late into development, his model looked not too different except for the color. The shade of Young Link's tunic was a brighter lime green here in comparison to the final games, and this went on for at least half a year until it changed to the darker green we have in the final game by the second quarter of 1997. While Link had a complex evolution for years, it was one of the most we can agree does show how further refinement can make a masterpiece of a design. But now let's move past Link and visit Link's people, the Kokiri. Now it has been confirmed in development that the Kokiri people were able to grow up into adults, but this eventually changed at some point. Unfortunately, we don't have any art, model, or screenshots of how they looked as adults. We do, however, have beta designs for both existing and cut Kokiri as data mined and found within the data of the game. To start things off, let's give a good look at Saria herself. Now note, the fact that her pants are white here doesn't mean much as a lot of beta models are untextured actually. The differences aren't too big, but as we can see here, it's a simpler model with disjointed hips, darker shades of green, 
no headband or belt, and overall much lower poly compared to her final version. The same goes for this beta version of Mido, being of a lower poly and having disjointed limbs, but along with his shorts not being tattered here while his sleeves are, his most apparent feature is his face, which is a lot flatter and meaner looking than his final game, which is quite fitting I say. Now let's speak about this girl Fado. We have her beta design seen in old screenshots which look completely different from her final design, and we found her model here too. Having in this case a green vest over a white shirt, puffier blonde parted hair, a design that I'd personally would have preferred, but hey that's my opinion. Otherwise like the rest, she has disjointed limbs too. Then we have one of the know-it-all brothers, who looked far more gnome-like originally, with him having long pants and a looser longer shirt. Overall was far stockier than his final counterpart too. Now let's speak about this girl sitting at the top of the Kokiri shop, not too different aside from her missing her belt and looking more disjointed. Now we come to the Kokiri heads, which are literally the heads of cut Kokiri from the game. But literally this is the only part of their model that is left in the game and almost all of them are characters we never have seen in the final game either. The only ones in the final game are this newer head of Fado and the Kokiri shopkeeper, which aren't too different from their final version save for a few face textures. Now considering we are on the subject of the fairy people, we definitely should look at Navi herself. Now Navi appears for the first time in April of 1997 when we see her with Link in the Lost Woods. As seen she like usual is in her normal white color, and it wasn't till the next stage of development when we see her changing color depending on the situation. However the colors she changes to are different compared to the final games. For one she turns red when next to an enemy unlike her yellow color in the final game. Though she would also turn into this magenta color too when next to a Poe. Why that color instead of red despite it being an enemy is beyond me. Now remember that big poster I showed earlier from 1997? Well there is an art of Navi here too, with an actual body present, looking a lot more like a fairy from A Link to the Past in fact. It is possible that this is what they wanted Navi to look like eventually, and that the big glowing ball was just a placeholder? but never got around to making this possibly due to hardware limitations considering how many polygons would be needed to render an entire fairy fountain with full fairy bodies. Of course by Wind Waker, this became a possibility. Now the great fairy tree himself more or less didn't change too much. Originally he had the old development cycle textures together with a big red nose. Otherwise the only other major difference comes from a version of him in this leaked map of the Kokiri forest, which looks a lot like the final games but has beams of light coming through his branches, something not in the final game. And yes his insides look completely different as it had a spiraling dungeon inside instead, for quite some time in fact, but I got a whole video talking about it that I recommend you check out after this. We may have spoken about the great fairy tree, but how about the great fairy herself? in a bluer more lifeless form. Originally in the trailer of the game, we saw a glimpse of a blue great fairy at the fairy fountain. However this model is still in the date of the game, and with some work it can be restored back in. And I can see why Nintendo changed her up too as it was quite lifeless despite her neat design. Now let's talk about the princess herself. Not much of her beta design is seen within the data of the game, but there is some artwork of her in the concept art. But specifically let's first look at this one I showed you earlier. At first glance, one may not even notice but there is actually quite a lot of differences here compared to the final game's version. Her hair is parted here much like how she looked in A Link to the Past as opposed to the final games that has a slicked back. Her dress is more or less entirely different with the top part going all the way down along with a number of details like the Triforce missing too. Eventually we got another concept art which looked a lot closer to the final games with the dress more or less looking finalized, but her hair still is parted here and her shoulder armor is entirely different. Though compared to A Link to the Past this is looking much more like that than anything else right now. Then comes the last piece of concept art we got from March 1998 from this neat sketch that more or less showed off a finalized Zelda. As for young Zelda herself, we have a screenshot which looks similar but her ears are very long and has a flatter face. And we can't talk about Zelda without talking about Sheik of course. 
Now going to that old concept part again, she is present here, which doesn't have a mask and thus her face is present here, with having also blue hair, white clothing, and even darker skin. Aside from the turban and her hairstyle, it looks like a completely different character. In fact, it's entirely possible that this was its own unique character and maybe even a man at that point. Considering the name Sheik is an Arabic name and this version of Sheik especially looked like they were from the desert, it is possible that the original intention was to make this clan of ninjas a desert tribe of assassins instead. And interestingly enough, this might have even had historical origins as the Order of Assassins originated from the Middle East, which of course inspired a whole set of games and if my theory is correct, Zelda series did technically roll back to this idea as we saw a group of Sheikahs in Breath of the Wild that live in the desert known as the Yiga clan. Now wrapping up the Sheikahs with a real Sheikah, Impa. Impa had three different designs in development as seen here. Despite having different designs, a ninja theme was present through all of them, one having a smaller build, the other having a stockier one. There is also one solo headpiece that depicts her with longer hair and a metallic looking mask. While none of these were in the data of the game, another beta head does exist within the data. Now we have seen Impa with her mouth covered while escorting Zelda out of the castle, but it only went up to under her nose while in the beta and went over her nose. Otherwise the only other difference is her hairstyle being slightly different with no bangs available. So now let's take a breather with the other Hylian people. And there's a crazy amount of beta designs and cut characters found in the data actually. Let's start off with this girl in green who is supposedly known as Arya from an interview with an insider that originated from a now defunct Zelda site called ZeldaPower.com. The girl here appeared in the earliest stage of development in the beta Lake Hylia and her model amazingly enough survived into the data of the final game. Except without a face and thus her red polygonal face sticks out making it look like she literally lost her face. Thankfully someone has taken it upon themselves to restore her face. But there was also another girl in the same stage who looked like her but dressed in white instead and located in the beta Hyrule Market Town. Obviously two different characters but both often confused as Arya. Some theorize this girl in white might have even been the tutorial character of that stage, much like Saria, while the one in green was more the Malon of that stage. And the one in green definitely has some resemblance to Malon too, considering her hair and clothing style. But there is also a third girl that we never saw in any screenshots and she was discovered first within the July 2020 Giga Leak, which shows that they were more or less copy and pasting these models with some tweaks here. Now on to the Hyrulean Soldier, which is found in the data game as a lower poly older version of himself, sporting a blue stomach plate and brown chainmail. But within the Yiga leak, we ended up getting additional beta material for his soldier, which includes 6 unused animations that look to give him more abilities to guard against letting Link inside, instead of just the old white transition and toss out method. As well, we do see him having a pose where he holds a spear with two hands, as seen in these old screenshots too. Now let's go through a ton of the beta residents of Hyrule Market Town and Kakariko Village. Starting off with the man on the rooftop in Kakariko Village. He has a beta design that looks slightly different with having a fun little design on the shirt. But with the Giga Leak, a ton of animations came out for him, from walking, standing, posing and even floating in midair. All showing that he was going to be a very different character at one point compared to his laid back nature of the final game. So moving on to the master craftsman's son, the man who you give the blue Kuko, Kojiro to, wasn't bald in the beta. In fact he had so much hair he barely could see, and even had a mohawk combined with it too. The mohawk part of course surviving into Majora's Mask where his counterpart Grog had one. Now with the bizarre shopkeeper. He has a model data mine from the game that is definitely a lot more low poly and less detailed, but he had legs with tight green pants at that. And once again the Giga Leak gave us animations for him too, one being an idle animation, the other being a desk slamming one, which I wonder what Link has to do for him to slam his desk like that. Now from one bearded man to another, we had this mess of a model which obviously has been corrupted when data mining the game. But it is likely the beta model of this bearded man you see in Kakariko Village and Market Town. Then we got the beta version of Mamamu Yan. 
Yeah, I was also 10 years old when I learned she actually had a name. But she is seen in both Kakariko Village and Castletown. Her hairstyle and clothes were very different in the beta. How much hairspray were you using here in the beta? Then we got the Twin Jugglers, which I'm using their Majora's Mask name here of course, but they had a super low poly model found in the data that lacked any texture outside of their face and midriff. And seems he also did appear in a beta screenshot, as just one person with no brother back then. Next is the old man in blue, Professor Shikashi, who may have had a beta model here too that is probably the lowest poly model I've seen so far. It might have not even been the same person, rather maybe a cut character, but they do share a resemblance no doubt. Then we got these two ladies of Market Town who have a beta design as well. In the final game they even had low poly models, so their beta model especially were low poly here. The one in purple eventually got a more refined dress and a more detailed face at that, while this lady here got a higher poly model and a tighter skirt. And lastly we got these three cut Hylians, all of which likely appear in Market Town. This one here was even seen in the beta screenshot. This one however not so much. And of course we have this hooded old man here which only has his head available and was likely gonna be part of this crowd here as they were all super low poly like this guy. Or maybe he was just a super low poly beta Raru. But that is all speculation here. Speaking of Raru, we do have this one piece of beta artwork of him but instead of having him in robes had him in what appears to be a sort of traditional Japanese warrior outfit, down to his hair even. As the source of this art Hyrule Historia says, perhaps he was part of a fighting faction. So maybe back then he was just a regular person at first much like the other sages and became a sage later in the game like the rest. Now let's move past the Hylians and onto the other races of Hyrule including the Zoras. First off we have this beta model found in the data of the game which is another super low poly model. Might have even been the one they used in the earlier stages of the game in fact. But it has a smaller body and fins but a bigger head. Very eerie looking without textures at that. But there is also that old sketch from 1998 which depicts a Zora on it and is different from both these models having fins for coming from his face and looking rather detailed in design actually. Looking a lot like the old Zolas actually from A Link to the Past. But if we turn this image around we do get the child version of that Zora too in a similar detailed manner and looking very different from the final smooth Zoras we got. Now Gorons hardly look different in the beta as found with this model in the Giga Leak. This one is lower poly with a wider head but not much else is different really. Now Gerudos are where things get interesting. The first of which is that you normally never see Speared Gerudos attack. But apparently they do have an attack animation in the data of the game where they slash. It's possible that they would have originally attacked Link instead of capturing him. Also they got a crouching animation too. But here's the big one which I'm sure some of you have heard before but every iron knuckle in the game is a Gerudo. Yeah. So if you take the camera right into the helmet of the Iron Knuckle, you will see the head of a Gerudo inside the helmet. And this head is unique actually from every other Gerudo found in the game. This is what Naburu's head looked like when she was an Iron Knuckle. And this is what it looks like in one of the generic Iron Knuckles. They look completely different. So it's definitely not simply reusing the same model for this to happen. In fact, anytime you strip down an iron knuckle, you can see that they definitely have a clear feminine body, much like any Gerudo. If any characters in the game were to be dressed in this much armor while wielding a massive axe so effortlessly, it'd definitely be this strong tribe of women. So it really shows that there may have at one point been plans to showcase that iron knuckles were either heavily armored Ganondorf allied Gerudos, or simply Gerudos who were brainwashed by Twin Nova to work for Ganondorf and while fighting them, maybe their helmet would have been stripped off too much like the rest of their armor to see that there was a Gerudo there all along. But alas, it's possible that this story beat was removed for being a bit too dark in that you are killing these brainwashed soldiers constantly. So much so that Nintendo even decided to remove their head altogether from Ocarina of Time 3D, even if they still got their curvy bodies. But now let's look at this more prominent Gerudo, Naburu. She has three different pieces of art from the development days. One featuring a more clothed variant with her hair looking rather different. Another which is likely newer had her clothes in a similar fashion to the final games 
but with a different looking face and jewelry lining the top of her pants. And then there's this version which is similar to the final games, except she has a hair bang. And of course, how can we not mention the King of Gerudo's Ganondorf? Now to our surprise, we have a lot of concept art of Ganondorf. First let's look at what I believe is the earliest concept of Ganondorf, and it's this rope formed with two knives and a turban. Simply labeled as a thief here as opposed to King of Thieves, Ganondorf almost looked like he was a nobody at this stage and would just rise up to the top throughout the game. But now let's look at these two pieces of concept part to Ganondorf from the beta stage and an interview by Miyamoto where he stated that the plan was originally to have Ganondorf change shape into Ganon gradually as the game progressed. We'll get back to that point. Now these two pieces of art have a half a year's difference between them, but we do see three different Ganondorfs in total here. Here we have the usual looking Ganondorf in his final form, but spinning around we got what appears to be Ganon, but looking very different from his final incarnation and more like the return of Ganon Ganon. Though imagine fighting this devil looking Ganon in the final climatic battle of the game. Now at this point of this sketch, it is possible that they dropped the idea of Ganondorf gradually changing, but if we look at the earlier art from half a year back, we have what appears to be Ganondorf's upper face and it looks nothing like the other two. Almost like it's something in between, not looking entirely human or beast. In fact, I now present this one other piece of art which clearly shows part of that gradual transformation to Ganon. His feet and arms are clearly beast-like at this point, and as Hyrule Historia states, face twisted into a mask of rage, showcasing a slow changing shape. Hard to say if this stage is the same as what is seen here in this constant part or further past that stage, but together with this, we now have a clear idea of how he would have transformed. With a rich cast of all kinds of people and races, Ocarina of Time was a game that took its time in refining each character to the point of being remembered fondly. And while I have covered enemies in a prior video too which I highly recommend you watch after, all this was brought together to make a strong lively world. Characters that were so remembered that they were even more fleshed out in this sequel Majora's Mask, a game that I plan to cover eventually, so hit the subscribe button for I plan to be back with more Zelda and other games cut content too. Hit the like button and comment below on which of these designs you prefer best. So everyone, thank you for watching!